It's always really exciting when there are some new Blender add-ons out there, but did you know that Blender comes with many different add-ons built into the actual package? So today I'm gonna to show you at least five of them that I really like, and I think you guys should at least check out. So they're in Blender. You don't have to download them as some external plug. You just have to enable them and run them. So I'm gonna show you exactly where to do that, how to use them, and then give them a shot. So let's jump into Blender and I am gonna be using Blender 4.0. So let's go ahead and jump into Blender. One of the first add-ons I wanna show you is called Bolt Factory. And let's go to Edit, let's go over to our Preferences. You're gonna go over to your add-ons over here and then just go up here to Search and just type in Bolt. And you're gonna see something called Add Mesh Bolt Factory. So let's click on that and let's minimize this. And now if we go Shift A and you go over to your Mesh Options, you're gonna go down and you're gonna see something called Bolt. Now you have an option here to go to add bolt and you can change a lot of the different parameters. So thread length, for example, is a really cool one. You can take the shank length like that and you can take the flat disc here and you can mess around with the head type because obviously there are a lot of different things here. I think this one here is probably one of the coolest features about this because it's one thing to have one of these things, but generally you're not gonna see the threads themselves, you're gonna see the head. So I think really that this thing here is probably the most important part that comes with it. It's just having some of these different attachments. I think it's really cool. So that is the bolt factory that comes with Blender. Go ahead and try it out. Now let's have a look at the next one. So I'm gonna press A to select everything and just press delete. Let's go back to our preferences. I still have the preferences window open and let's go to our add-ons here. Let's just clear the bolt here and let's go search and type in F2 and let's go to the mesh F2 add-on. And this one is really awesome. So let's minimize our preferences here. Let's go shift A. Let's just go to our mesh options, add in a grid and let's tab into edit mode and go to our top orthographic. And let's just grab some of these verts here and just delete them by pressing delete and go verts. And let's say, for example, you want to fill in some faces here. What you can do is grab a corner vertex, press F, and then it just automatically generates the vertex and you have to hold in control and then just snap it to the grid. So instead of having to come and grab a vertex, go E to extrude and hold in control, snap it, and then kind of select the rest of the verts to fill them in. You now just grab a vertex, press F, and it automatically kind of does that for you. Like so, in fact, if I grab this one here and just press F, it actually kind of lines it up automatically. In fact, all I have to do is just press F and press enter. Now this works really well because we're dealing with straight geometry here. If I were to actually go ahead and just kind of mess this up a little bit, that changes things a little bit. So if I grab this corner vertex here and go F, it kind of tries its best to follow along with what's going on here. It kind of looks at the average direction of things, but I think this one is really cool. Give it a shot, it's called F2. So let's go ahead back into object mode. Let's just delete this and let's now go back to our preferences. Let's come here, clear this and let's just type loop and let's get the loop tools over here. Let's minimize this. Now let's go shift A again. Let's go to our mesh options. This time we'll add in a grid again. Go into edit mode and let's go to our top view and let's just select some random faces like so. Let's just say we wanted to come here and round this out. How do we do that? So we can now press N to bring up our properties. And we're gonna see over here, there's an option now called edit. And let's come to our loop tools drop down here. And now all you have to come here is click something like circle and it automatically turns it into a circle for you. And now you can extrude it. And this has all sorts of other features that not all of them are gonna work by the way on a plane, but some of them will work really good on certain situations. So go ahead, learn more about this tool, try it out, but it's really cool that it exists. It's just called the loop tools and it comes under the edits. So pretty cool stuff. Now let's go back into object mode, just delete this and let's now go back to our preferences. Another cool tool is the align tools. Let's just clear this out and type in align. And let's just go to objects, align tools, enable that. And now what we can do is let's go shift A, let's add in maybe some igospheres just to test it out with. And let's go shift D X and move one over and then go shift R. So we have these three to use as an example. And let's just say we go in our top view and we grab this one in the middle and we go G Y and just move it over here. What if we wanted to align these two to this one over here? So all you'll have to simply do is hold in shift and select the ones you want to align. And let's say we want to align these two to this one. So we'll select this one last and make it active. And then just under your properties, you're gonna to go to the top to item and you should be able to come all the way down under properties and go to align tools. And now there's all these different things you can align. 
So let's just go align the location and let's just say we want to align it maybe on the X. And now it's aligned on the X. So I'm going to undo that and then I'm going to try the Y. And you can see the Y does a really good job there. If I do the Z, um, you're not going to notice anything because we don't. this one doesn't have any Z information. It's sitting right at zero. Or you can just go ahead and press all of them and it just puts it in the exact same location. So if you're dealing with a lot of objects, something like this could be very handy. It's called Align Tools and you can work the same with rotations, all that sort of stuff. So if I rotate this in a different location or position, you can see here, I can now go and align the rotations as well. So pretty cool stuff, check it out. So that's really cool. Let's look at one more add-on that you'll really like. So I'm just gonna press delete with all of these. And now let's go back to our preferences. Let's just clear this over here and under the add-ons, let's just go ahead and search for something called sapling. So we're gonna type in SAP and let's go to add curves sapling tree gen, enable that and now let's go shift A Let's go over to our curves and now you're going to see something here called sapling tree gen and like it says it generates trees for you. You can come to the sapling add tree here and like all the other ones we've looked at so far you can mess around with the parameters. So this is kind of like the branch distribution and I'm not sure if this is connected with geometry nodes yet but I can imagine in the future that this would be kind of set up with geo nodes. Um, but yeah, give it a shot. It's a ton of fun. Even if you're doing sculpting, I've sometimes turned this into a mesh and then sculpted on top of this for doing kind of like old looking trees. So yeah, very fun stuff. Um, mess around with the vector modes here or auto. Um, the shape here, you have all sorts of different shape options. And somebody's made this tool and it's free in Blender. So check it out. So that's been my top five um, free add-ons built into Blender for today. I'll share some more in another video sometime, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.